and we're optimistic that you're going to be seeing a lot of good hockey action. Gloss comes into the game, fresh off a rather, well, I guess the best thing to say about it, uh, workout, strenuous workout against uh, Lynn Classical. They lambasted a very, very weak Lynn Classical team, 16 to nothing. Unfortunately, uh, I think coach, uh, head coach Dave Curley would have liked a little better tune-up in that first uh, match, but that's what he got. And so he comes in tonight. Uh, uh, back. We're not going to introduce players. We're not going to start with Michael Bannon. We're ready to drop that button. We'll set the lines for you as we have them. Boston controls the face off. Now Salem controls, jumps it up. We should be behind the net by Irwin. He checked against the boards. First shot on net and save. The Salem goalie should be, we can't see his number from up here, but we believe it's number 30, Dan Kozlowski. The Gloucester goalie is David Gove. He's a sophomore, starting defense. Uh, should be 22, Ryan Patrickin, 21, John Buccio. Patrickin is tri-captain, along with Jewel and Shimataro. Face off in the Salem end, right of the Salem goal, controlled by Salem. Puck loose, Salem still controls. Gets it out, lost the checks. Salem, puck up, intercepted by Muniz. He's along the sideboards, along with Gary, able to, looking to tie it up, but Salem's able to get it loose. Gloucester takes possession again. They got in from the point, deflected. Listen for the announcement, but so a dual backhanded in front. Goalie made a save, rebound, laying loose. It was picked off in front. Gloucester goes quickly on top. With 13.30 to go in the period. one nothing. Lost the third line out there. Center is Ricky Gehring. Puck back into the Gloucester end. Gloucester back on it. Bounces around, it's on the net. Salem knocks it off. Tries to sneak it in front. Checked off. Gloucester controls. That's Gehring. And I'm afraid we do not have an identification on number three. And we have our first penalty of the game. The one nothing lead. All play unit for Gloucester is their first line of Shimataro, Gove, and Cusimano. With Gary at one point. The other point man for Gloss is number four, and he's the second number who I do not have, although I can see on his back that he's Ryan Patrick, and he's supposed to be number 22 as we were given before the game, but there's been a change in jerseys, and we'll go along with Patrick's number being number four. So he's out on there, out there on the power play. See David Jewell, a right wing on this power play, so they've broken up the first line, shot in on that, but it's smothered. There are so many light bulbs out on that scoreboard up there yeah, telling you how much time it means and penalties can be very, very difficult. Gary dumps it in on the backhand. Salem back, controls, whacks it out along the boards. Gloucester able to keep it in. Salem again whacks it out along the boards. It's outside the zone. Gloucester sets up, bad pass by Patrickin. Back on the Gloucester goalie, Gove. He has to make a save into the cross, Salem end, excuse me. Shot is wide. Salem with a rush, up the left side, shot in wide of the goal. Salem still with possession, pass out in front, nobody there. Gloucester looking to get something going again. Shimatao in behind, centers out in front, falls down. Nobody there to collect. Gloucester's gonna change up. 
And I think if I can read that clock correctly, Salem has killed off the penalty. Yes, they have. Both teams are even. Buck up the left side. Glossy controls. Garing. To Lewis, number 12. Pass up to Salem. To Lewis, number 12. It's intercepted by Salem. And the Gloucester goal scorer for this at this time will have to remain a mystery until I can get some help from either Doc or they can get the PA system working. So you have to bear with us. Ross Control behind his own net. Puck out. Salem intercepts. Looking to set up. Wide. Intercepted by Lewis. He could be in. Dragged down. We're going to have a penalty. Lewis with a nice interception. Salem got a little sloppy with a pass out around center ice. Lewis was right there. He got in clean. Trip from behind. Shot. He did get a shot off on that. Save was made. But Gloucester again back on the power play with 10.43 remaining in the period. Second power play of the uh, game for Gloucester. First one didn't really uh, look too productive. And uh, I'm sure the Lynn Classical game did not give uh, head coach uh, Curley a chance to really do some of the things that he wanted to do as far as being able to experiment with power plays and what have you. Because 16 to nothing, you're just looking to... Uh, not run it up anymore and you can't do some of the things that you like to do so this is the first real test for the fishermen Salem clears out Gary unable to stop it at the blue line Salem back on it but uh, Gary back there passes up to Jewel number 11 skates up the right wing looking for somebody to break with him still hangs on to it looks to set up back to the point shot save in behind puck is loose in front batted at Salem defensive play. Salem still unable to get it out. Shot back in again. All sorts of bodies in front of the goal. Puck is smothered by the goalie. A couple of good opportunities there. Good, good work for the Salem goal. 10 7 remaining in the first period. Foster 1 0. Point 14. Lucero is now going off. Being replaced by Brian Patrickin. Jules, the right wing. Shimataro with the puck. Back to Gary. In on the goalie. Not that difficult a chance. Salem able to clear. Knocked down. We have a little. We may have a penalty. I think there was a little extracurricular activity after the puck, puck was cleared out of the Salem zone. He's pointing at the goalie and he's pointing at a gloss to play. We may have matching penalties. And again, we have no PA. We're going to have to kind of watch who goes into the box. We can see Meniz going in for Gloucester. We can see two people in the box for Salem. So I think that's what it is. It's offsetting penalties. And I believe the goalie was involved. I saw the stick action afterward. After Salem still cleared the end of puck out of the zone. So possible, but I think it's about 34 seconds remaining on the first Salem penalty. So Gloucester will enjoy the uh, man advantage for the next 30, I'll say four seconds. Uh, then the teams will be even up, although a man down. Patrick in at the point. Cusimano centers. Good shot. Nice save. Patrick in controls. Shot. Kicked out. Shot again. Wide. Gloss is still controlling. Out to the point. Mishandled at the point. 20 seconds remaining on the power play. Lost it back. Patrick escapes it up. He's got Cusimano and Gold out there with him, along with Bacheo. Cusimano in front, somebody there. Cusimano dumps it in front. Good defensive play, Salem. Salem looks to come out. Checked off by Patrick in. But Salem still controls. Long shot in on net. Goal forced to make the save. Gloucester, again, another penalty. A little chippiness here early in the game. The refs are on top of it. And it's Gloucester. Being penalized, I don't think it's any kind of a matching situation. Again, no PA, 
We're only able to guess over here. There are two Salem players in the penalty box. To go in the period, Gloss is still with a one nothing lead, but Salem now on the power play. Save was made by Gold. Smothered again by Gold. Little action around the goalie. What happens when a goalie smothers a puck and he's kind of laying there prone and the other team likes to take a little poke at it. Referee has to be quick with that whistle. Face off to the right of the Gloucester goal. Shot from the point. Nice save. Nice save. We understand the goalie's name. Uh, the goalie is gold. We see 17 is his number, and uh, he's wearing Ed Nazareth's jersey. Nazareth is injured. There are two roster injuries. Uh, one's his jersey. We can read the clock correctly. There should be 106 remaining for the Stalin power play. Salem controls over center ice. Chris White for Salem along the side boards. He's unable to control. Now he gets a pass up and it's a goal. It appeared that White had lost control on the side boards. He regained it, got the puck up to number three, Captain, uh, co-captain Eric McFarlane, and he just drove it into the lower left-hand corner. And it was, it was a situation where it looked like Gloucester had control of the puck, and White was able to take it away. Both teams at even strength. Rossi gets a man back because of the Salem goal. Rossi controls the center. That's Gary. Over to Jewel on the right wing. He loses it. Salem tries to get it out. Gary checks. Back in. Along the boards. Looking to set something up. Skates in front. Lifts the back end. It's wide. Salem goalie unable to control, tried to jump out and get it. Shot back in, but that's wide. Salem over here on the sideboards, passes up. McFarlane, nice move. Unable to control, Jewel back checking. Puck is behind the Gloucester goal. Gloucester controls. Stick on the ice. Somebody else there playing with a stick. Action on the boards as Gary controls the gloss, escapes behind his own net. Over to Jewel on the right wing. He comes up the right side. Shot in. Escapes a change. Intercepted. Intercepted. Billy Crowley out on defense for Gloss to number two. Should be the first line of Shimataro, Gove, and Cusimano for Gloucester. Cusimano taking the face off. Can't see who the other defenseman is. Now Coach David Curley is going to change up. Talk to uh, Coach Curley before the game. We get a chance to pass along a couple of his thoughts. Coach uh, Curley in his second year as head coach here at Gloucester. Sent to this year by Mike Kahn and Jan Collins. Back at the point, shot is smothered. Salem player knocks Gloucester off the puck. Puck up along the sideboards. Salem trying to control, kicks it loose. Up, Gloucester able to keep it in. Flipped out by Salem. Salem in. Still a little extra corrector activity. A lot of poking and shoving going on here. Referee's been atop of things. He called five, six penalties already. But the boys still seem to be a little chippy. Big game for Gloucester. Uh, classical certainly no test. Salem, although uh, much improved, they lost their opener to Saugus four to nothing. Saugus figures to be one of the stronger teams in the league. So Gloucester with a with a test here against a team that probably uh, is it can be labeled uh, not quite in the same uh, uh, category as Gloucester as far as uh, who should be the better team. So it'll be an indication tonight uh, for Gloucester of uh, how they stand. 
Shot in, but it's wide. Controlled by Gove. He dumps it behind. That was Mike Jewell in behind controlling. Out along. Up to Shimataro. He's in. Trying to carry, but he steered wide. Checked along the boards. Broke it up. Looking for somebody to pass to. Pucks in front. Kozlowski, the same one goalie, Gabriel. He's small, but he had three pieces of white. So he found my saves and has made sure when the puck is loose around him, he's quick to dive on it. He's been whacked. 5.30 to go in the first period. 1-1 one, one is the score. The knees line is out with Derek Gary, David Jewell. Defense is Billy Crowley. He controls, shot in on... Kozlowski, but he's able to make a relatively easy save. The puck was up where he could see it. No real problem. Crowley out on defense with Ryan Patrickin. <laughs> Derek Gary centering this line. Only a sophomore. A referee didn't like the way things were going, so he calls for new face-off people. Meniz, number eight, will take the face-off. Into the corner, controlled by Salem. And Salem sloppy passing in their own end, but they're able to get it out now. Back out to the point, shot in wide of the Gloucester goal. No problem there. Jewel trying to come up the wing with it. He's checked off. There's a tripping, but the referee isn't going to call it. Gary went down. Park loose out in front. Nobody controls. Now Salem takes a whack at it. Glossick controls. Great in front. Jewel with a very, very nice backhander. Pass came up to Jewel. He stayed right in the slot. Nobody there to check him. I think it was Gary who got the pass up to him. And Jewel just wheeled off the backhand. Salem goalie had no chance whatsoever. No defensive help. And Jewel makes it 2-1. Lost the lead with 440 remaining in the first period. Pretty play, Jewel. He just wheeled right off the backhand of the goal. He had to freeze. No uh, indication of which way Jewel was going to go. And he just stuck it by him in the right corner. Puts Gloucester back on top, 2-1. Good forechecking in there by Gloucester. Would not let Salem get that. Puck is tied up. Shimataro. Take the face off. He's out there with Cusimano and Gove. Nick Michelson, number 13, shot in, smothered in front, seeing some def defensive action, along with Boucheo. I'm sure 14 is Boucheo. He's listed uh, on the program as 21. But I can read the name on his back. Cusimano comes off the right boards, but he loses it. Lost the controls. Jason Gove over to Michelson. Draws the defenseman to him. Back to Michelson. Looking to get something going here. A little deliberate with the puck. Now Cusimano skates it in, but he's checked off. Cusimano again. Back to Michelson. And Gloss was offside. Cusimano hadn't cleared the zone. Both teams change up. 3.43 to go in the period. Gloucester with a 2-1 lead. Face off to the right of the Gloucester goal. Derek Gary is out there to take the face off. Three doesn't, okay, now he's satisfied. Everybody set, drops the puck, controlled by Salem. And around behind. To McFarlane, he's got the one Salem goal. He loses control, but puck does come out to the point. Salem shoots it back in, back to the point again. Another shot. Whoa, just wide. Came through traffic. Gold would have had a tough time with that one. Foster skates it out. Gary up to Jewel. Salem takes over. Gary tries to forecheck. Muniz. 
Intercepts the pass, but Salem back again. White in. Good defensive play, but he did get a nice shot off. Probably a little quicker than he wanted to. Go about too much. He can't save as Jewel. Foul play unit sees Gove. Along with Shimataro, Kuzumano, Gary. And I can see uh, that may be whoever's wearing 14, and I think it's Busheo. Jewel is supposed to be, uh, Mike Jewel is supposed to be wearing 14, but it says 14. Busheo on the back will go with that. Puck is by Busheo. Controlled by Gloucester. Looking to set up. Salem four checking. Shimataro into the Salem end. Gove misconnects on the pass. Lost it. Gary back to the point. Lost it still. Shot wide. Didn't have to save it, but he did. Definitely wide of the net. A little over a minute to go on the penalty. 2.25 to go in the period. Lost it with a two-minute event. Channel 12, please, to bring you this first home game for the Boston Fishermen. As we say, one of nine, we've changed a little slow to get set up. Now they're trying to decide who should be covering who. Shimatao is going to take the face off. Now they want a different alignment, so he's case off. Now they're ready to go. Kicks it over to Gove in the corner. Excuse me, Benitez in the corner. Back to Gary at the point. He skates it in. Shot. Smothered in. It's a goal. Tipped it in front. I believe it was Jewel again on the power play goal. The shot was in front. Salem goalie made the initial save. He's trying to say that Jewel was in the crease. Jewel was in behind him, but I think he was wide of the net when the puck was just laying there. He poked it in, and until I'm told differently, I'm going to give him credit for the goal, making it 3-1 with 2.13 to go. Lost to be able to take advantage of the power play, and again, I believe it was Mr. Jewel, second goal of the night. Lead. As the Salem defense has broken down a little bit in front of their goalie, the goalie doing a good job, but a couple times they left people alone in front and they paid the price. Cusimano heads it up. Salem takes it away, trying to get it out of their own zone. They're able to, but Glossa controls. Go pass wide. Bucheo back as Glossa changes up. Bucheo is checked in the corner. Salem comes out with it. Salem still controlling. As Krajewski jumps it back in. Glossa now skates it out. Salem changes up. Glossa tries to catch him in the change, but Salem doing a little checking. Michelson over to Meniz. Own net. Michelson stops it at center ice. Over to Patrick and Puck is bouncing. Patrick and being four checked. Gets it over to Michelson. Bounces off the sideboard. Salem controls. Michelson back to intercept, though. Trying to skate it out. He's being forechecked by Jellison. Puck in behind the gloss of net. Patrick in back there, looking to tie it up. He does. 36 seconds to go in the period, first period. Gloss are enjoying a two-goal advantage, three to one. Obviously, they don't want to get sloppy. With just the 36 seconds to go in the period, find themselves uh, with just the one goal advantage. They change up, send out their first line. Okay, I think we're ready. Boss is still controlling. Just looking to get it out at this point. 22 seconds to go in the period. Now they've got something. As Shimatao comes up along the right side, good rush. He's in, nobody there to collect. Nice pass in front. Just nobody there to take advantage of the good pass. Shot is wide. Seven, five, less than five seconds to go in the period. Michelson back, and this should be, and it is. The end of first period action. Foster enjoying a 3-1 advantage. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with an interview with head voice basketball coach for Gloucester High School, Bob McCaffrey. Second period. Get a 
Now we're back in place. We're getting ready for second period action. I have been joined here, thank goodness, by my colleague and good friend, Bob Rowan. He's going to help me out for the second period. He's fighting the common evening. cold. Bob, nice to see you. See More ways of one. Here. Nice lead. Uh, Gloss jumped on top uh, quickly, scoring. Uh, we find out that it was Gary, uh, Derek Gary on the goal, uh, just one minute and 30 seconds into the uh, first period as we have a face-off. Salem controlling, jumping into the Gloucester end. And uh, McFarland for Salem tied it up at 1-1. Then Jewel uh, with 4.40 to go in the period made it 2-1. And with 2.13 to go in the period, uh, gave Gloucester a 3-1 lead. So Jewel uh, with two goals right off the bat. You remember him from last year. He showed us that he was going to be a goal scorer. I recall last year David Jewell got off to a bit of a slow start because of a uh, cut on his foot. So it's nice to see him off quickly this year. Action uh, all around the Boston net. As the goalie's into an altercation, we believe, and again, we can only uh, give a guess that the uh, number 17 belongs to David Gove, sophomore goaltender. The PA system is not working here, much to my chagrin. And we have to really pay attention. There were a number of penalties in the first period, and we were unable to pick up uh, all the time who did what to whom. But uh, we now see that the referees have calmed down the situation. No penalties, just a little, uh, shall we call it, uh, friendly jousting. I did get here to see this, the last two David Jewell goals, and uh, also uh, one of the good saves by Gove in the in the nets for Gloucester, but uh, easily could have been a higher scoring game in the first period from what I saw. Yeah, the Salem goalie, I thought, did a good job. I think his defense let him down a little bit too often, and a couple of pucks that uh, laid out there in front had the defense been a little more alert, being able to keep the Gloucester players along, uh, particularly the first goal uh, by Jewel. He was just all alone in front, and a uh, nice swing around backhand, a little action along the boards there. Puck is tied up. Again, I think the referee's got to keep an eye on the situation. The boys are a little chippy in the first period, and they're starting off the second period that way, Bob. Yeah, we might see matching penalties call here soon if more much else goes on. Ross are changing up. Face off will be to the left of Gove. The uh, should be the first line out there for Gloucester, Shimatao, Gove, and Cusimano. As, again, uh, there seems to be a lot of jockeying here before uh, face-offs. Okay, now we'll settle down. Gloucester controls, puck in the corner. Now Salem takes over. Pass out in front. Gloucester intercepts. Skates it out. That's Cusimano. In, but wide. Still has it. Forehand misses, round behind the net. Nobody seems to want it. Salem goalie clears it. That's Kozlowski. Kozlowski, excuse me. Salem on an intercept, unable to control. Poke back to center ice, back into the Gloucester zone. That was a fine rush by Cusimano. He really kept after the puck. Unfortunately, he couldn't get this uh, shot to test the Salem goalkeeper. Uh, Gloucester really lacking in size last year. I don't think many of the Gloucester kids have gotten bigger, but it looks like at least the kids who graduated for Salem were all the big kids. They seem to have about this equal size here tonight with Salem. Yeah, we noted that uh, last year, uh, we, we probably belabored the point. We noted time and time again just how small a team uh, Gloucester was. This year, they seemed a little bit bigger. I know some of the kids found their way to the uh, weight room, but uh, Salem last year just gave some big boys, but this year, I think, seemed to be a little more evened up. Size-wise, that is. I, I think uh, ability-wise, Gloucester is uh, still ahead. Salem uh, is turning things around and, and, and skating better, but I think they're yet to prove that they are in the upper echelon of the Northeast Conference. Face-off, controlled by Gloucester. They dump it into the Salem end. Tied up along the boards by Gary. Now the puck is loose. Salem skates it out. They dump it in. That's Boucheo back on it. 
Back to the point. Shot. Deflected wide. In. Absolutely crazy bounce. Very strange bounce. Did you give anybody credit for that other than uh, just a fluke? I didn't see anybody poke at it. Again, we have no PA system. We're going to have to guess. It is a Salem goal. It does make it a 3-2 game. It looked like a harmless shot from the point. Just bounced up there in front, and it took a fluky bounce. Now, whether it was somebody skate or somebody did poke at it, it. I think it had to hit somebody, and uh, Gove just said no chance. Very strange, but it does result in a Salem goal. and cuts 159, the, the time of the goal in the second period. I'm glad you're going to be able to read that clock because uh, last year we noted how many times uh, we were missing light bulbs. This year there are less. Face off, batted around. Shimataro waits for Kuzumano to get on side. Now he is on side. He has the puck, tries to dump it in front. Salem controls. On the sideboard, Salem able to get it out. Brown behind it, across the net. Salem weak centering pass, goes nowhere. Puck is loose, still loose. Salem controls, trying to get something going. Glossa ties it up. Out around, back to the point. Shot in from the point, that's wide. Salem behind the net. Four checked by Patrickin. Holds it in there, the puck is loose. They more concerned with bumping against one another than going after the puck. Now it's finally, no, it isn't tied up. I thought that was a whistle, I'm sorry. And the puck is loose. Lost about a rush. That's Cusimano, he dumps it into the corner so Glosser can change up. Salem behind his own net. Gloucester on a change. I think Gloucester got a break earlier on that shot from the point by Salem. The Salem player was completely unattended, but the, uh, the puck hit a dead spot on the boards. It didn't come out the way it um, might usually have bounced out in front. He might have been able to uh, slip one past go if it had bounced out. We have an icing. Face off, beat to the right of the Gloucester goal. Good play. Take the pressure off a little bit. Get reorganized and get the line change. That was number four, Mike Dunn for uh, Salem, who was in kind of deep for a defenseman uh, at, to the other side of the net on that shot from the other point. See Michelson out there on defense. Should be the second cross the line. Can't see the numbers until they switch around. It is Gary. Centering the second line of Muniz and Jewel. Puck back to the point for Salem. Shot is smothered. This should be a good breakaway action for Jewel. He's got a race for the goalie. The goalie try oh, just fly to the post. Ju goalie raced with Jewel. He was able to deflect Jewel just a little wide. Jewel had to rush it as the defense got back in on the play, and Jewel's shot was about three inches wide of the goal. Yeah, I think he made the right play. Uh, the goaltender made a nice try dive for I think I think Jewel made the right play to shoot it when he had the chance. He had a wide open net. It was a little bit of a tough angle, but uh, he just missed, and I think that uh, he, if he hadn't taken the shot then, stick handling wouldn't have really worked out that well for him. Now, Salem uh, was back there covering up for their goalie, uh, that's an iffy play. The goalie just out there by himself, but uh, Salem defender got back. Jules saw what he thought was the best opportunity. Shot was just wide. 11 12 to go in the second period. Gloucester advantage down to one with a 3 2 lead. Back to the point. Shot is kick save in front. Salem tries to get it out. Now they do. Long and dumped in. Uh, the mysterious number seven who is not on the Salem roster, so we don't know who he is. Rush by Jules, shot right on. Good save. He seems pretty determined to get a hat trick here. <laughs> Maybe more. He's very determined. A couple of nice efforts. By the senior tri captain David Jewell. Face off be to the right. Our left. The goalie's right of the Salem goal. Very slow to come up to these face-offs. I don't know whether they're winning to make a change or just the pace that they uh, want to go at. Shimatao looking around. Now the referee wants him up there. He's got him. 
Centering Gold and Cusimano controlled by Glosser. Back to Patrick and shot wide. Salem controls, just dumps it out to center ice, controlled by Gloucester. Looking, set something up, Salem with some forechecking. Jewel controls, he enters up to the blue line, lets the shot go, it's smothered. Gloucester on a change. Salem, just content to dump it out. They're looking for a change. Gloucester gonna try to take advantage, no. They decide not to come up with a big rush. That's Gary, stick handling. He's checked off, but the puck is loose. Kind of rolled in on the goalie, not really a shot. Patrick unable to control at the blue line. A race as Gove comes out of the Gloucester net. Knocks it away. Uh, we, no, okay. Looks like Shimataro was banged up a little bit around center ice, but he's skated off okay. Being attended to him back of the Gloucester bench by assistant coach Mike Hahn. Patrick and on a rush, again, Salem willing to uh, stick their body in front of that puck a little bit. Tried to bang it around behind, hit the referee. Did come out though, face off outside the blue line. Got some real up and down action at the moment, and uh, I think this loosey-goosey kind of play is gonna eventually be in Gloucester's advantage. Let's hope so. I, I, I have to think that Gloucester, again, has the better talent, the better skaters. But Salem, this program uh, head coach, uh, Bob Sweezy, Sweeze, not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, the Salem program had been in the doldrum for years. Uh, and Probably the best skating Salem team in a while, but I don't think they want to skate with Gloucester like this up and down action at, in the O'Malley rink, which is bigger than some of the rinks they'll be playing in this year. Puck dumped back into the Gloucester zone. It'll be a face-off. That's just a nice call. Because the manpower situation, this is the first time the third line has been out in the second period? Yes, I believe you're correct. We have McCray, number nine, who is not listed on my roster. Number 12 is Lewis. Sophomore Chris Lewis. He is the third line. I'm sorry, McCray should be number 18. We do have a uh, different set of numbers here. This is the third line. Should be Gary McRae and Lewis. Michelson on defense, along with Buscheo. Face off controlled by Salem. Dump it out to center ice. Michelson back for it. He rushes, gets it into the Salem end. Salem right back again. They just dump it out. Lewis back on the puck. Ucheo controls, bad pass. Right in front to Salem. That was crossed in, Final, uh, fortunately he didn't get a very good shot off, but Salem able to control at the point, and Gold dies out and controls it. If you're gonna make a blind pass, you make it along the boards and not up the middle. Uh, <laughs> Gold uh, made Salem change their shot at one time. It went wide and then dove uh, headlong for the puck when they when they laid it in front again. Uh, so good work by the Gloucester goaltender. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen the young lad. He's a uh, only a sophomore. I know the coaches are high on him, and uh, obviously the first most important game for Gloucester. We cannot consider the Lynn Classical game to be <laughs> very important anything. It's the situation with Lynn Classical is sort of sad. I I like. I mean, as I know they, they they hate to go down to a 19 league, but I think the Northeastern Conference has to look around for another team of comparable strength if they want to keep the league uh, really meaning something. And Lynn Classico has to look around for a lesser league to go into. Well, the description I got of, of the Lynn Classical skaters tells me they're just not ready to compete in the Northeast Conference. And, and that can only be a dangerous situation as the season goes along. Sibitaro, up to Gove, back to Gove, kicked around. Gove unable to control it, Salem does. Back to Patrick, and though at the point, shoots it wide. That's Billy Crowley. Went in to try to control. Patrick and looking to set something up. Knocked off by Salem, controlled by Gloucester. I'm beginning to believe that number two, although I've got him listed as Billy Crowley, is not Billy Crowley because he's going to see on his shirt, and Billy Crowley is not one of the dry captains. 
So if I find out later that uh, I was messed up, I was given these numbers by the head coach, David Curley, and the numbers do not correspond in some cases to what I'm seeing out there on the ice. So if I'm misidentifying, then I'm going to blame it on Coach Curley. Because you can't tell the players that are on the program. And, uh, <laughs> we have, there's no have program, program here. You're really in trouble, right? And uh, I, the coach was nice, nice enough to give me some time this afternoon, and I'm, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying that if I'm misidentifying, I'm going by the information that I was given. I will apologize. Nobody controls off the faceoff. Salem finally does. Shimataro controls the puck. Puck is loose. Gove unable to get off anything. Puck is loose. Salem now with a rush. Nobody with him. Shot. Skid wide by Gove. Puck is loose in front. Gold dies down, knocks it away. It's a foot. That's a skate race, not a foot race in hockey. Puck jammed up in front of the Gloucester bench. Salem controls on their own end. There's something on the ice. Uh, the referee has a spot. He's going to go over and get it. Salem dumps it in. Checked along the board by Patrick in. Collected behind the net by Bucheo. Boston looking to start something from behind their own net. Puck is loose along the boards in the corner. Patrick in, checked in there. He's, but Jewel is able to control. Trying to work something out. A little sloppy in their own end at the moment, and they didn't get any help from the referee on the last sequence. No. Okay, this should be tied up. That, we felt last year, Gloucester uh, gave up a lot of goals last year, over 100, I believe, 105. And we thought one of the problems they had was their inability to control the puck in their own end and just gave the other team some pretty easy opportunities. And I'm sure that's one of the things that uh, Coach Cooley would like to see corrected this season. Well, you don't have a stat called turnovers in hockey because there's the frantic pace and the action and the, uh, like you do in football and basketball, but there are certainly dangerous turnovers. T turnovers are more dangerous than others, obviously in your own end, and obviously uh, if you give it to somebody at a good shooting angle. And that's what Gloucester did last year, and they, we don't want to see that continue this year. I believe we have the third line again uh, for Gloucester, seeing some more action. Patrick in, uh, in a little too close to the faceoff. No three, wants to go off the puck again. Michelson and Patrick in on defense. I believe that's 19. Uh, Rick Garing taking the face off. Face off controlled by Gloucester. Into the Salem end. In the corner, funny bounce. Bounces in front. Shot is wide. Then anybody can tell me who number nine is, and we'll both know. We believe it's uh, junior uh, left wing Danny McRae. We're going to have to verify that. Puck is tied up in the corner. We'll have a face off. Salem changes up. 620. I'll go for exactly 620. Okay. I believe 620. You have the bold man in this case. Roster clinging to that 3 2 lead. Some chances for uh, both teams, uh, better chances for Gloucester, but uh, Salem hanging in there. Gloucester's got to put a few more shots on net right now. Uh, they have really, they've had the puck bouncing their way in the offensive zone, but they really haven't put a good shot on net. First line for Gloucester out, Gloucester unable to control. Salem dumps the puck in. Oh no! Uh oh, wow! <laughs> Completely misplayed by Gove, and he got lucky. It went between his legs and sat right on the goal mouth, but Salem unable to get back there and poke it in. Really? Shot in front, but it's wide. Salem keeps it in, dumps it in back. That was his first sophomore mistake. <laughs> Just completely misplayed it. He's down. Salem pokes at it. This one he's got. He's he's got, got a nice it. play. The Salem player probably didn't lift it as high as he wanted to, but Gove got it. And uh, he was uh, very alert on the play, considering he was just about down and out. Yeah, I think I'm the one that got down. He was a little mesmerized. He kind of looked at us and said, oh. Probably just as well he was tested again immediately after that mistake. Yeah, no time to think about it. 
5.43 to go in the second period. Lost to three, Salem two. Face off to goals right. He's a little slow in getting up. Don't know whether he was banged up in that last action or just trying to catch a breather. Ross has his first line out there. Susamano, Grove, and Shimataro. Deshaye on defense. Along with Michelson. I think uh, that's number eight, Mike Mendez out there, so we may have a little adjustment on these lines. Try to pick up the numbers as we go. Salem back to the point. Dumps it into the corner. Now behind the net, Salem controls. Skates back to the point, looking to set something up. Playing with a little bit on the sideboards. Back to the point. To Irwin, looking to set something up. Howie finally shot, shoots in, shot in. Salem still. Foster, uh, Salem uh, just really not doing much with this power play. They're just waiting too long to pass the puck, and as a result, they just lost it. Yeah, they're tentative, and uh, sorry we didn't pick up on the power play again. We're working uh, no PA here, and uh, I did not hear a whistle. Salem obviously on the power play, but thus far, uh, nothing to show for it. Very, very tentative uh, with their passing, just basically looking to set something up. Shot is up over and out of the rink. A shot from the point that was should not have been taken. It was blocked by number eight, Mike Benise, who's doing a good job on the uh, penalty killing, but uh, the defenseman had a wing open on the right side. It would have been done much better to pass it, and Gloucester's lucky he didn't. Well, they seem to uh, be content to pass and look for uh, uh, a good shot, and they end up taking uh, a couple of slap shots from the point. And the way your defense is deployed, you're not going to do any good that way. So that's rather strange on the power play. 15 seconds to go uh, with the Salem advantage. 4.29 to go in the second period. Face off just outside the Gloucester blue line. Shimataro on the face off. Salem controls. Gloucester checks. That's goal. Again, Salem, uh, a lot of looking before they do their passing. They do dump it in behind. Gloucester back. Unable to get it out. Checked up along the boards. Now they do skate it out. That's Shimataro with Kuzumato in behind. He was unable to control it, though. That's Shimataro. Shoots it in. Not a real tester. Salem smothers the puck. He's waiting for the whistle. Finally gets one. And the teams are back at even. Sorry about missing that power play. Again, no PA. Got a headset on, and I did not hear the whistle. But in any event, it wasn't that much of a power play, so I don't think I missed much. No, Salem uh, very tentative. A uh, couple times swung the net and uh, not really looking for the pass. Everybody looking to do it on their own. And uh, the whole essence of a power play is to pass it to the open man. By the way, if that goal had gone in uh, to the Gloucester net, it would not have been the longest goal I ever saw scored here because a couple of years ago in a Rockport game, there was a 90-footer that was whiffed <laughs> at by a goaltender against Rockport. Apparently, and, that happened the other night up in Classical. I guess the uh, uh, Gloucester kid basically had a clearing pass, and the <laughs> Classical goalie just kind of watched it go by him. Doc Enos described it as one of the longest goals that he's ever seen. He's seen a few. Mm -hmm. well, we had a 50-footer last year from beyond, uh, just about at the red line. Uh, by Steve Wilson, so we've seen our share of long range. Puck is controlled in the corner by Gloucester. Pass in front, nobody there to collect. Salem gets it out. Race to the puck. Salem's there first. Three on two, two on three, I should say. As Gloucester got back, puck was shot wide. Salem now has to race back. Salem looking to get it out. They do. Gloss is going to be able to control. Patrick and backs into his own end. Tries to come up along the sideboards with it. Nobody there to collect. Now, Benitez intercepts. Skates it off. Now skates it into the zone. Shoots. Easy shot. 
glove dropped down by Salem. Checked off the puck. Nice check by Meniz. But the puck comes outside. Frost has to regroup. That's Bichetto. Now Patrick in looking to get something going. Jewel checked off the puck. Salem right back in again as Gloucester loses it on a pass to center ice. Now Gove thinks twice about leaving that puck lay there. Decides to cover up. 2.47 to go. In the second period, Gloucester still with a one goal advantage. 3-2. to two. A little miscommunication there between Gove and his defenseman, and uh, he did the wise thing just to fall on the puck. Yeah, he looked out there and saw a white jersey and realized that he might not be able to direct it out to his defenseman, so he said, I'll cover it up and play it safe. Face off to Gove's right. It was Garing taking the face off. Sam play loses the stick into the corner. Foster looked like they had a chance for a break. They have to find out who number two is, because I don't believe it's Billy Crowley, but we'll try to check that for you between periods. McCray fans. Now he passes in front. Salem, that, that time Salem had a uh, defender in front and the Gloucester uh, guy was knocked off the puck. Bouchéo into the corner. He's whacked from behind. Puck is loose. Gloucester does control. They have a break here. Salem hustling to get back. Shot is wide. Two on two situation. Bouchéo, nice shot off the point. Good save by the Salem goalie. That may have gone wide, but a good glove save. It's a good shot. Gloucester are rushing a little bit on some of their opportunities, and uh, that last one in front of the net, although the defenseman was there to challenge, the backhander was available and just uh, too much, too slow reaction by Gloucester in front. Both teams change up. We have 158 to go in the second period. Gloucester, as we've said, with the one goal advantage, came in with a 3-1 lead into the second period. The only goal this period by We're Salem. getting a quick departure at the end of the period here, but uh, I'm glad that uh, J.D. is now the voice of Gloucester Hockey on Channel 12, and I'll be an occasional fill-in when he Thank has you. other commitments with basketball. And uh, going to be a busy schedule of sports on Channel 12 this winter. Very busy. We're really looking forward to it. We're going to cover everything from soup to nuts. And I want to thank you very much for sitting in. I hope whatever it is, one, you didn't give it to me, and two, it gets better. Well, I have other commitments uh, at this time, but I'm happy that I will be able to fill in for you on occasion. And when I can, I'll uh, be stopping by even when you're doing the games here by yourself. Look forward to it. Love save in front. Not much for sure. Weak back ender. 118 to go in the period. Face off will be to the Salem goalies left. Lost needs to settle down and take advantage of the scoring opportunities that are coming their way. Uh, obviously, three to two game. The next goal is going to be a key if there is a next one. Uh, I really like uh, this goaltender uh, for Gloucester, the sophomore, and uh, Gove, and uh, he really seems to have a very quick stick down there. And uh, they're going to be hard pressed. They're going to try and beat him on that side very often. Face off. Controlled by Salem. On behind their own goal. Gloucester tries to forecheck, but Salem able to get it out. Tries to connect it. Center ice. Yes, they do. Puck was loose. Gloucester back. Good job. Oh, puck is loose. Thought they had done a good job of back checking, but the puck got loose, and Gove had to smother it basically off uh, the stick of his own man. And as always, when the goalie is down, the, uh, his teammates try to protect him, and uh, the opposition tries to poke in there a little bit. Well, the puck never should have got through to the Gloucester goaltender. It should have been steered aside by the defense. And uh, then when it was finally loose in front, uh, Salem didn't react that well. Gold get on top of it. And Salem getting a little frustrated here. Not that Gloucester is completely innocent, but Salem, I think, a little bit frustrated with the opportunities they've had to tie up the game since they got the first loop goal. Alertness by Gove uh, to keep his eye on the puck. There was a lot of action around him. He had his eye on the puck all the way. Face off outside the Gloucester blue line. Gloucester makes a change. These face offs are taking forever. Gloucester sends out his. Now we see that the <laughs> three and a half hour pro football game. I, we're coming up on the three-hour high school hockey game 
even with three 15 minute periods, unfortunately. Yeah, again, there's a, a lot of uh, delay in, in setting these face offs. Gloss has a second line out. Uh, it is a Gloss to power play. Okay, that's the reason for the delay. Of, okay. Again, I do not hear the whistle. I did not see the signal. We do not have a PA. And not only that, but the, one of the spear goaltenders from Salem is sitting in the penalty box and has been there the whole game, so it's kind of hard to tell when somebody else joins him. That's so what's confused me a couple times. Right. I looked over there and, and seen the white jersey in the penalty box and looked over and seen nothing going on in, on the uh, clock, but it is a power play for advantage for Gloucester with just a little under a minute to go in the period. Patrick in with a rush, tries to center for Jewel, unable to connect. Right idea by Patrick, and Jewel was almost there. Yeah, bang, bang, play, and it just missed time. Salem clears it behind the Gloucester end. Gloucester back to connect. Salem dumps it back in again. Bounced around, Salem looking just to dump it in. 27 seconds to go in the period. They will enjoy the power play advantage for the remainder of this period, the beginning of the third period. Gloucester on a rush, coming up the right side is Shimataro. Skates it in, leaves it from your knees. Deflected shot into the corner. A little hesitation there. The, the pass was, the drop pass was made, and Meniz should have gone for the shot a little quicker. The Salem defender was able to stick down. Salem's going to be able to kill off this penalty as uh, Gary controls, but unable to do with it. Bob, thanks for stopping by. Okay, JD, I'll be talking to you again. Take care. At the end of the second period, Gloucester with the power play advantage, unable to do anything. The only goal in the period by Salem. Gloucester three, Salem two. We'll be back in a moment with the third period. Set the third period action. Gloucester still on the power play. Face off. Controlled by Salem. Back in the zone end. So come up along the sideboards. I want to thank Bob Dolan for sitting in during the second period. And he had another assignment to get off to. Bob will be doing games, be sitting in. I'll be sitting in with him. And a lot of things going on on Channel 12 for Schoolboy Sports this winter. Really looking forward to it. A very ambitious schedule. As I said, everything from soup to nuts, gymnastics, track. Basketball, hockey, anything that you want to see. Manchester Rockwood, Gloucester, all will be showcased as the winter season goes along. We have a face off to the right of Gloucester Goldie Gove. Gloucester able to control. Let's settle this number two situation. It is Billy Crowley. My apologies. My apologies for thinking it might not be. He does have a C on his shirt, but I've been informed that's an old shirt from last year. So number two is Crowley. Uh, if I got the issue confused, the C confused me, and uh, we'll identify him as Crowley from now on in. I see his dad sitting to his to my right. I should have just leaned over and asked him. I'm sure he could have been able to spake me out in a minute as the puck is tied up to the right of the Sa uh, Salem goal. The Saugus on the brain, that's the next cross to basketball opponent. I believe that's the end of the power play. None of the penalty lights are now working. I don't know whether they've given up on that. And again, I must apologize for missing some of these penalties. I'm not hearing the referee's whistles. And we do not have a PA. Salem's backup goalie has found himself a comfortable spot in the penalty box. And out of the corner of my eye, when I see him, I just assume it is him. But Every once in a while, he's joined by a teammate. Plus, there's a couple of Salem kids sitting up in back of the penalty box, and that's done nothing but confuse yours truly. Shot on net by Gloucester, steered wide by Kroslowski. Puck is up over the Salem goal. Jewel back in the corner. We have a Salem injury. Jewel is in the corner. We have a whistle. Salem player went in to check him. That's Pajeski, Pajeski. He's hurt, he's down. He went in to check Jewel. Jewel just reacted, got his hands up in front to uh, defend himself, and uh, Kozlowski went down. Kozlowski is the goalie, and the injured player, I believe, is Pajeski. 
people out the Salem bench out to take a look at him. While we have this break in the action, it is a 3-2 game. Gloucester with the lead. They went out 1-0. Salem come back, tied it up 1-1. Then two goals by Jewell gave Gloucester a 3-1 lead at the end of the first period. We have the EMTs out there now. Hopefully this is not a serious injury. But uh, these, the EMTs are well trained. I'm sure they're going to be able to handle the situation without any problem. End of the first, as I just said, found Gloss with a 3-1 lead. A couple of good opportunities to up that lead. Unable to capitalize. Salem came back middle of the uh, second period. Scored a goal. Gloucester, a couple of uh, power play opportunities. Unable to capitalize. Uh, a little loose with the puck. Uh, good work by both goalies. And we do have a 3-2 game. The injured player is being attended to. And let's hope that nothing is too serious. And pardon my back to the uh, camera. I just wanted to take a look down there and uh, see how things are going for him. I think we're going to have a rather uh, long break here. So maybe we'll take a break, give you a little message, and come back after that. Okay, I think we can stay here now. Uh, of course and everything, he's okay. He does a little pointing in to the uh, Gloucester bench, and uh, I'm sure I saw the play, and I thought Jewel was just basically protecting himself. And uh, Pajeski came in there, looking to check him along the boards. I don't think it was a deliberate situation, whatever Jewel might have done. Uh, his hands came up. He looked to protect himself. I think what happened is uh, Pajeski might have got poked around the neck area. And uh, he's okay, he's upset. I think he's uh, maybe passing out a little blame that doesn't belong. I don't think it was a dirty play by Jewel. In fact, I know it wasn't a dirty play by Jewel. And uh, Kajeski feels it is, he's upset. He's pointing in the Gloucester bench and the referee's gonna have to keep an eye on that situation. Face off to the left of the Salem goal. 1341 remaining in the game in regulation. Again, we seem to have trouble with these face-offs. Referee doesn't like what he sees. Goes back to set. The play is behind him. Gary McGloss at number 16, taking the face-off. Meniz, the right wing, number eight. Left wing is Jewell. Face-off back to Michelson. Shoots, deflected wide and out of the rink. Michelson on defense with Pacheco. This is the second glass of line that's out there now. Gloucester, the way things are going, would definitely like to get an insurance goal. Uh, Salem finding themselves able to escape with Gloucester. They should be able to, but they are. And uh, anything can happen under uh, those kind of circumstances. And we'd hate to see Salem sneak one by here, but we think Gold has done a good job goaltending. Action along the boards. Now we've got action off the puck. Referee's going to let it go. That's Jewel. Everybody on Salem is taking a run at him. They're going to get Jewel on a... Penalty. It's going to be a Salem power play. Jewel was involved in that situation along the boards, as we said. And three or four of the Salem players just took runs at him all over the place. We thought there was a penalty uh, going to be called. Against Salem, referee let it go. Jewel got a little tired of being run at, took a poke at somebody, and he's gonna have to spend the next 1.30 in the penalty box, giving Salem the power play with 13.10 to go. In the period, one goal down is Salem. Face off's gonna be out here near center ice. Gloucester with Michelson, Patrickin, Cusimano, okay. Making the change, Michelson off. Pucheo out to help kill this penalty. Along with Uniz. Salem controls though, into the Gloucester end. Intercepted by Muniz, pokes it loose, unable to control it. Uh -oh. Okay, they're going to let that go. A little hooking there. Accidental. Salem behind their own end. About a minute to go on the penalty. Ucheo. 
Gonna try to control a little bit. Rasta dumps it in. That's Ryan Packerkin. Salem has to go back to collect. Up to McFarlane. He has one of the two Salem goals. Again, action behind the Gloucester net. A lot of poking, some chippiness. Referees quick to get in there. Cooler heads will prevail, we hope. Stick to hockey, none of the nonsense. Both teams take the opportunity to change out. 12-21 to go in the period and the game. 41 seconds on the penalty. All play advantage for Salem. Wire out there on the Salem power play, along with Jellison. Dunn. Can't catch the other numbers. Let's call Stan. Back to the point, kick loose. Rush, this is goal. Maybe in. Back check. That's gonna be a penalty. Yes, it will be. Okay. Who's stick at the puck? Can't do that. As Gove on a good break down the left side, looked like he was about to swing the defenseman. He just dropped a stick down, slid along the ice, knocked the puck loose, and we're gonna be even up. For the next 26 seconds, and Gloucester will have the power play advantage. Face off to the right of the Salem goal. Both teams at even strength, one man down. The next 26 seconds. Loss of controls. Michelson tries to keep it in, he does. Up to Cusimano, but he loses it. Salem dumps it out. Drove out to knock it aside. For Patrickin. Salem checked off the puck at mid-ice. By Shimataro. Michelson knocks it up. Salem back there to collect. Looking to set something up the middle. Nothing there. Patrickin can't find the puck. Michelson has to go back for it. Roster on the power play. Doing a 5-on-4 advantage. Next 40 seconds, 11-17 to go in the game. Jewel in alone, unable to connect. Skated in front, unable to control it. Puck shot in wide from the point. Good rush by Jewel. Michelson, slap shot wide. Jewel there, but a little in behind the net. And the puck is loose. Michelson's gonna have to go back for it. Goal comes out, makes a save. Michelson collects. Starts it up, up to Jewel. Jewel along the right side, checked off. Cimitaro with a backhander, nothing though. Lost a power play, trying to set up, having his troubles. That is the end of the power play, backhander in front by Ryan Patrickin. Salem gets their fifth man back on. Salem goalie, Kozlowski lost sight of it. Puck was right down in front of him and he looked behind him. But he was able to collect it. Both teams change up. Face off will be to Kozlowski's left. 10-23 remaining in the game. Lost are clinging to a one goal advantage. Crowley and Boucher the defense. Third line out for Gloucester. Gehring on the face off. We have a whistle. Referee away from the face-off, over by the Salem bench. Don't know what the problem is, but... Okay, now we're ready to go. Bearing again on the face-off. Referee, very patient, maybe a little too patient. Now he drops it. 
Controlled by Gloucester, Crowley. Along the right wing. We get another penalty. This one may be on Gloucester. We'll see. Or maybe it's matching. Keep our eyes open here. 10-14 to go in the game. Garen going into the penalty box. It appears that it will be a Salem power play. With 10-14 to go. Coach Jan Collins, assistant coach Collins over the rail. Coach Curley up, deploying his defense. Got Ryan Cusimano up there killing penalties, along with Meniz. Meniz steps away, Salem controls the uh, faceoff. Boucheo also out there to kill this penalty. Ten minutes to go in the game, Gloucester with a 3-2 advantage for Salem on the power play. Able to keep the puck in at the point. Skates it in. Boucheo stops it with a skate. Shot, but wide. They have been deflected in front by Patrickin. Back to the point. Throwing up. Nobody able to collect for Salem. Dunn loses the puck. Cusimano on the steal, but he loses it. Up to Jellison, Muniz in the check, on the boards. Puck is tied up. Luzavano Muniz there to tie it up for Gloucester. 43 seconds on the Gloucester penalty, 9.27 to go in the game. Pace's game is a strange one. One second is end-to-end -end action, and then very, very slow on these face-offs. Both teams content just to Kind of saunter out there. Referee's agreeable to that. Gloucester makes a change. Shimatao, Gove, Patrickin, and Michelson, the penalty killers. Face off, controlled by Salem. Patrickin checks for Salem, able to get it back. Michelson drives it out. Salem unable to knock it down. That was knocked down along the Salem bench. Can't do that. Somebody uh, from the Salem bench reached out and touched the puck. Salem changes up. Curley, Coach Curley is asking why that faceoff is where it is. Referee's explaining. I don't know if the referee, that was a Salem player who knocked it down. That was not going to go in. He reached out over the board to knock the puck down. And the faceoff is back just outside the Gloucester blue line, and Coach Curley doesn't think that's quite the place for it. Try captain Jerry Shimatao to take the face off with cap co-captain Eric McFarlane from Salem. Lost the controls, dumps it along the sideboard. Now Salem dumps it in, but Gove backhands it down onto the Salem goalie. Kozlowski. Salem tries to dump it in. Michelson there to stop it, just right back again as this penalty is just about up. Both teams evened up with 8.44 to go in the game. 3-2, Gloucester. Salem looking to try to come out of their own end, just dumps it out, center ice. Patrick and right back in with it. For Gloucester, Salem able to control though, check along the boards. Puck down behind the Salem net. And he's into four check. Puck is loose. Salem skates it out. White unable to collect for Salem. Puck still loose. That's Muniz just dumping it in. Gloucester. 
Kauf rising. Face off be to the left. Of the Grasso goalie go. Second line out for Gloucester. Minis, Jewel, and Gary. David Jewel, two goals. One of Gloucester Pie Captains looking for the hat trick. Off the face off. Gold has to make out, dive out there and make a save. Puck just laying loose. Nobody there from Salem to really do anything about it. Face off again to goals left. Uh, now the referee's finally getting a little impatient. It's neither center was ready for the face off. Face off controlled by Gloucester. They come out. The duel along the wing, race to the puck. It's icing though. <coughs> Seven forty three to go in the game. Gloucester, again, one goal advantage. Salem pressing, not any real consistent threat, but just enough to uh, make you a little bit nervous if you're Gloucester Rooter. And as we pointed out, uh, the Gloucester crowd, a uh, pretty good one. A lot of uh, students down to our right, hooting and hollering, making some noise, being good fans. Face out to the right of goal this time. Now, referee doesn't drop the puck, doesn't like the way the Salem Center is conducting himself, waves him out, brings in another one. Controlled by Gloucester, they clear it out. But Salem clears it right back in again. This will be delayed offside. Salem hadn't cleared the zone, although the puck came back in. Now they call the offside. Face off will be between the Gloucester blue line and center ice. And referees in a little bit of a discussion. And Salem changes up. Gloucester's third line out. Chris Lewis with Garing and uh, Danny McKay, I believe. Now, Coach Gilly makes a change. Sending out his second line of Gould, Muniz, and Garing. Gary, I'm sorry. Get a Gary and a Garing. Try to keep that straight. That's Derek Gary, a Geary. Sophomore, number 16. That's him taking the face off. And apologies, Derek, if I'm mispronouncing the last name. Face off controlled by Gloucester, but Salem able to dump it in. Michelson back behind the Gloucester net. Controls for Gloucester. Around to knees, up along the left wing boards. Gary, but he loses it. Salem takes over, and that's Patrick in. Controls the puck at center ice, looking to set something up. Unable to connect, he gets it back again. Dumps it in this time, behind the Salem net. Just under seven minutes to go in the game. Michelson flexed the puck over to the right side. Patrick in controls. Looking to set up again. Gary in again. Jewel on his right. He shoots. Nice save. Kozlowski. Steered it away to his right. Jewel was there to the left for any kind of rebound. Kozlowski with a nice save. Patrick in back. Gets it up along the right side. Salem has to go back. Pick it up. Salem comes up the right side. Gloucester makes some changes. Salem dumps it in. Wide to go. There for us in the collect. Wheeling and dealing out in front is uh, Captain Mike Dunn. Shot is wide for Salem. Gloucester now takes over. Cusimano looking to get something going as he spots Shimitaro right along the blue line. Shimitaro has to wait. No, oh, they do call the offside. They say Shimitaro took it in. Both preceded him in. Kuzumano looking to set something up. Excuse me, Shimitaro looking to set something. Kuzumano did set something up to Shimitaro. Gove a little anxious. They said that Shimitaro did carry the puck in and then back with Gove in the zone. So the face-off is just outside the Salem end. 
555 remaining in the game. Gloucester, good opportunity. Save Kozlowski. Skates it out, drops it down. Michelson dumps it back in, though. Salem has to come around behind his own net. Guzamano there. Salem, but uh, Crowley able to pick up the loose puck. <coughs> Guzamano with a rush, got Gehring with him, lets to shoot it. Kozlowski with a nice glove save again. It's a two-on-two -two situation. No rebound. As Kozlowski just gloved the puck. Wasn't going to leave anything there for anybody to pick up. Well, teams are changing. No scoring thus far in this period. And has not been a score for over a period and a half. Slam scored early in the second period to uh, cut the margin to one. There's been a couple opportunities for both teams since then. But nothing past the goal. He's a Salem out with a three on two. On the right side, poked away by Michelson. He snaps it right back out to center. Dunn just drives the puck in, actually, uh, close to being on net. Salem unable to keep it in. A little foot race here. Taken down by Dunn. Puck loose. Shot wide. Love loose on the ice. Uh, Salem shoots the puck in behind the Gloucester net. Salem's there, tries to center. Nobody in front. Puck goes around behind the net, though. Uh-oh, loose in front. Nice save, go. Loose puck in front. Salem player right there. Go, good concentration. Able to kick it away. 4-14 remaining in the game. Both teams change. Good opportunity for Salem, but Gove was paying attention. It's able to turn it aside. <coughs> Excuse the off mic cop. We're getting a little raspy here. Channel 12 is pleased to bring you this first Northeast Conference home game for the fishermen. Thank my camera person. Producer Seneca Nagello for the usual fine work. Puck is loose. Gloucester races for it at the knees. Two players down on the ice. Jewel, good try at controlling. Puck around behind. Salem controls. Blind pass. They get away with it. Boucher tries to dump it back in. Hits a Salem player. Muniz looking to set up. Jewel almost shot on net. Like to take the shot himself. Of course, Lasky with a nice save. Crowley keeps the puck in. Puck loose in front. Puck still loose. All thoughts of action in front of the net as the puck came loose in front. Lost it with a good chance to pounce on it. That's been knees down on the ice. Salem defender tied him up. He couldn't do too much about it. Puck just lay there for a second. And Kozlowski was able to slide it under him. <laughs> under himself, I should say. Face-off will be to Kozlowski's left. With 3.36 to go in the game. Lost the controls, but they lose it. Little forward-checking, sloppy pass. Gove shot in and wide. Cusimano tried to deflect it. Excuse me, it's him a towel that tried to deflect it. Michelson tries to keep it in. He's unable to. Patrickin out of his own end. Up to Shimataro. Over to Cusimano. Oh, nice, nice move. Nobody there for the pass. Long shot in from center ice. It's wide. Salem just dumps it out. A little less than three minutes to go. Patrickin up to Cusimano. 
Over to Gehring. Down the right side. Passes in front. Nobody there. Michelson keeps it in. Round behind the net. Now Salem with a rush. Pulls the puck. Shot is wide. Puck is behind. Still loose. Everybody's down. But Gold has the puck. A couple of Salem players knocked one another down. It's the cheer that you hear down below us. A little bit of action behind the net. Gold just waited when the puck finally came out, came loose. He dove on it. 2.23 remaining in the third period. Glasser still holding on to this 3-2 lead. The Salem team kind of thought when Glasser went up 3-1, it could be a uh, easy night for the fishermen, but somebody neglected to tell the witches that. They skated hard. Uh, Gloucester probably not as crisp as uh, Coach Curley would like to see them, and certainly only the second game of the year, and that first game did absolutely nothing for them, I'm sure. But they've had some opportunities and just unable to uh, collect. Around behind, still skating. Now he's up to Shimataro. Puck, no connection. That's going to be an icing. Shimataro lurking just outside the blue line. She'll try to get it up to him. Would have probably sent him in in pretty good shape, but they were unable to connect. And with 2.10 remaining, another faceoff back in the Gloucester end. We'll keep an eye on the Salem goalie. It's a little too early yet. I would imagine Salem, when they get the opportunity, will call a timeout. Uh, there'll be a time when they're going to want to pull Kozlowski out of that goal, press to uh, tie things up. But uh, it's a little premature for that. Puck again, controlled uh, by Boucher. But Salem tries to make something happen in front. Gloucester able to get it out. Gray tried to uh, get it back to Crowley uh, on defense. Salem intercepted. Shot knocked in, but wide. Puck loose in front. Lost the controls. 140 to go in the game. Salem. As Ryan is there back checking. Michelson, McCray back there. Jewel skating through center ice over the blue line. On the left side, he's in alone. Shot, missed. Rebound, loose, missed. Two good opportunities for Gloucester. Jewel with a nice rush up the left side. Came in alone. Kozlowski could not glove it. Puck laid loose. Gloucester. Two good opportunities. I do believe we do have the timeout, as we thought they would. Yeah, Salem skated over to their bench. Gloss is skating down to theirs. Basic strategy in a one-goal game is when to pull that goalie if you're a goal down, which Salem finds itself with 104 remaining. And Coach Curley deploying defensively. Roster a little tight over there, sitting down along the boards. Looking to take a break. Sure, Coach Curley wants to keep his first line, his first defense out there. Uh, for this remaining 104, Salem discussing how they're going to pull the goalie, when they're going to pull the goalie, how to attack. Gloucester, again, what to do defensively. Don't get sloppy with the puck in your own end. If you have the opportunity, skate it out, look for that open net, fine. If not, let's protect the puck. Both coaches very animated over there. Good game, good uh, early season hockey game. And you have to like what you see out of this Gloucester team. Second year for head coach Curley. Takes you three or four years to get your system in the way you want it to work. He succeeded the very successful uh, Don Riley. I see him up here this evening uh, being a fan. After being a coach for a number of years, very successful coach. 
and uh, Coach Gurley's come in, decided to get things the way that he wants to do them, get the players used to him, and I think this year you're going to see the fruits of that, and over the next couple of years, I think you're going to see some good things happen up here at the O'Mealy Rink, and when this team is skating at home, I encourage you to come on up and watch, and when they're on the road, uh, follow them. If you can't get up here, please watch the game on Channel 12, as we will have all of the home games of the Fishermen. Face off to the right of the Salem goalie, Kozlowski. Controlled by Glosser, Michelson with a bouncing shot. Deflected into the corner. Salem controls. Salem goalie is looking for the opportunity to come out, but he won't be able to as Glosser takes over. As Gary Skates, shot on net, nice shot. Rebound loose, shot again, another shot. Three good opportunities for Glosser, Kozlowski with three excellent saves. And we have a little, little scuffling here, a little frustration. Uh, we're gonna have, okay. Across the play, took advantage of the referee and turned his back and a little push from behind, shouldn't do that. You definitely don't wanna take a penalty at this stage of the game if you're Gloucester. 37, uh, excuse me, 34 seconds remaining. You have the one goal lead, you know. Okay, we have a timeout now. Salem, I think it was Gloucester that called the first time out. Now Salem calls this time out. A little extracurricular activity down there in Gloucester. You don't want to do anything dumb and fine. If you feel you got a little score to settle, let, figure out some other way of doing it. Don't do it where the referee may see you, send you to the penalty box. You got yourself a problem. Look over towards the uh, Gloucester bench. We see, again, players taking advantage of the timeout collecting their breath, sitting down. Coach Curley's scooching down there, talking to them, telling them exactly, again, what they should do, how they should do it. Lost to goalie, Gove over there. Fine game for the young sophomore. Very impressed. All three lost to goalies saw action in the first game against Glasgow. Gove, uh, senior Keith Harris, and Armando uh, Minotto. And uh, apparently, thus far, Gove is going to get the nod. I haven't really talked to Coach Curley as to how he may set a goalie rotation. I don't know whether we'll see uh, a rotation of two, three goalies, or Gove's his man, and that's who he's going to go with. But uh, Gove tonight certainly has done the job. Uh, sophomore, you have to be impressed. I have heard some good things about him down on the freshman level, and uh, he certainly lived up to his advanced billing. Okay, we're ready for the last 34 seconds. Faceoff will be outside the Salem end. The Salem elects to keep their goalie in. Lost to control this faceoff. Obviously, the open net would be very, very inviting. Gary out for the faceoff. On with Gold. Ucheo. Gary controls the center ice. Now Salem takes over, 24 seconds to go. Somebody just threw something on the ice. I hope the referee spots it. That's the gloss of fans I was just talking about. They shouldn't do that. Should not do that. That could cause an injury. I don't know who did it, but it's a dumb thing to do. Offside Gloucester. I'm not going to blame that on a Gloucester fan. Sorry about that. But it sailed out of uh, the area down where a lot of the kids are. And if it was one of them, I would hope that uh, it's a very childless act. All you can do is get somebody hurt in that case. Somebody comes down, jams the skate, gets hurt. What do you prove? I hope we don't see any repeats of that up here. Gloucester fans are usually pretty good, pretty knowledgeable, very knowledgeable, and here to enjoy some hockey. And some buffoon wants to uh, litter the ice. Well. I hope that they don't in the future. 14 seconds remaining. Salem has been un unable to pull the goalie. They dearly love to. Salem controls. Puck jammed up along the board. Quick whistle. Salem's not going to be able to get that goalie out. There's nine seconds to go unless they control and can start a quick rush. He'll never make the bench in the nine seconds. And all Gloss has to do to assure themselves of this victory is control the faceoff. Little conversation over along the sideboards. Juan Silva, the scorekeeper, had a question. Referee went over and answered the ball. Nine seconds remaining. 
Carey again to take the face off. Cusimano Meniz out with him. Boucher on defense, along with Ryan. Important face off, Ross the controls, they win the game. Salem controls, they'll have one last chance. Referee again, takes a sweet old time. And I think he's about ready to drop it. Salem trying to position themselves, and they do control, but it's back into their own end. Six, five, slap the puck off, that's gonna be icing. And with the Glossa team rushing onto the ice to congratulate their goalie, who did a fine job this evening, David Gove, only a sophomore. A little jubilation down there in the Gloucester end. A good Gloucester effort. Final score is three to two. The Gloucester scoring came early. First period scoring for Gloucester. It was Gary getting the first goal for Gloucester, putting that up one nothing. Salem answered uh, with McFarlane making a 1-1 game, still in the first period. Then Jewell with two straight goals, gave Gloucester the 3-1 edge at the end of the first period. And we certainly couldn't have guessed at the time that would be the end of the Gloucester scoring. But uh, it certainly was. They had their opportunities. And we uh, were just handed the uh, shots on goal total by uh, Gloucester sports reporter, uh, John Doc Enos, which we thank him for, and as I suspected, Gloucester with a huge territorial advantage, shots on net, Gloucester 32, Salem 15. So we credited uh, Kozlowski throughout the game for doing a fine job, and he certainly did, as it was a 2-1 shot advantage for Gloucester. But uh, a good effort. I think Coach Curley has to be pleased. Things will still have to be worked on, but he's got some combinations out there that I think once they've worked a couple of games together are gonna do some nice things for them. And we have to be pleased with what we saw tonight. And I hope that as you watch this game on TV, if you're unable to be up here, that you'll swing up here for the next home game because I think this is gonna be an entertaining group. I'll be here for most of them. Bob Drone will do some of the games. And we wanna thank you for tuning in this evening for Seneca Nagello, my very, very capable camera person producer. I'm J.D. McAkron for Channel 12. Thank you for tuning in.